Mom, but they put my painting in a in a room. Oh, they did make you feel like. Oh, it, it made me feel amazing. But I didn't know that that's what I was going to do when I was just drawing and doing stuff every day. So when I did the Mayfly, I was grateful that okay. somebody gave me the opportunity. So today we are joined with Neil. He's an exceptional artist and also the creator of the Hegemoyo exhibition. He's from the US and today we're going to learn more about his creative process, um, his leader leadership and the upcoming projects he has, like as a, an artist. So I would like to know, and you let the people watching know, um, how did your journey as an artist start? I didn't make art before Korea, oh. so I basically started here. When did you arrive to Korea? Two and a half years ago, okay. so 2021, August 2021, I had just graduated from college. Wow, oh. and you arrived here and then you started doing art? Yeah, I went back to school. But what, what inspired you like to do art Like because you arrived to Korea? What happened in Korea that made you do that? Uh, Korea was tough. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, I had a tough time teaching. And so I guess, I guess like, um, I didn't, I started like going to galleries and stuff like that. And because uh, I like culture. Okay. And like I studied literature. Whoa. But I can't really, I can like read Hangul, but I, I can't read Korean. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I know the pronunciation of the letters. And you can, that's why you're I can, And I can write it, yeah, 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 I can write it. So I can tell, I'm like, oh, gimbap, like I know that. Uh -huh. But I can't, I can't like read a book. So I was like, I thought art, I guess, was like a way to uh, take in their culture uh -huh. without, you know, with my limitations, like I couldn't, I couldn't read. Usually I read, I read a, a ton of so it was a way of expressing what you wanted to communicate. I'm gonna know more about history, you know more about Korea, uh, and you know all the humanities, art, music, literature, dance, uh, performance, whatever. They're all like um, they teach you what the the culture thinks is important, and like what the culture has kind of been through, and and kind of learn about people. So I figured if I saw some art, learn some stuff. Mm. Was six. it easier starting making art? Making art? Yeah. No, no. it was tough. Um, I would like to know what themes or subject does your art mostly convey? Um, or like what kind? Or how would you like uh, put your art into a category? Do you think it has a category? I don't, I don't know, I guess so. Probably does. Um, I like to, uh, I just kind of do whatever I feel like doing. Okay. So the way the way it started. So like that? Well, yeah, so this was like a piece of wood I found down the street. And okay. my friend Lara came over. And so we were just drawing on it with crayons and just having a conversation. So it was like a way for her and I to be close to each other oh. and to uh, talk but like have something to busy us. So, so that, you were doing it with your friend? Yeah, we were doing like the crayon and the pastel work. And then she left and I and that's when I started adding color and paint and stuff like that. Is this one of your first artworks? No, 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 I did this last week. <laughs> <laughs> Not so long ago. Do you remember the first piece of artwork that you have made? Probably. Yeah. Well, what happened was in August, not last August, but the August before that, I made an Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know about these? Instagram? Yeah. Never heard of you them. You heard of these? All the kids got them. Instagram? No. Yeah, so I made it, I made an Instagram. Cool. <laughs> I made an Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, and my original plan was, I was talking to my friend Juan, he lives in Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, I was like, I'm, I'm all alone out here, it's crazy. And all, I didn't have any social media, all I had was dating apps. And that oh. shit is toxic. Are you seen there too? That shit is crazy. Yeah, yeah. 
advertise your art, right? Well, I didn't have, <laughs> so I didn't have any art at the time. Okay. So I was like, I was talking to Juan, I was like, I was like, I gotta, I had just broken up with my uh, ex-girlfriend. She's watching this. She probably, she might see it. <laughs> uh, but I had broken up with her and uh, I was like, I gotta find a way to like connect to human beings other than like the dating apps. So I was like, all right, I'll download an Instagram. But if you download an Instagram, it's a medium. So you need something to transfer, right? Like you have to say something. So I was like, I, I've always been writing. Right. Like I've been journaling for a long time. I study literature, I read, I write, I'm, I was making poems. So I was like, I'll, I'll share my poems on Instagram. And so it start, if you look at my Instagram now, like the first couple posts is just my poems. Okay. And it started like that. And after a couple of weeks, I was like, no one's reading these fucking poems. And then they're in English. So I was like, I'm not going to meet anyone in Korea who's going to read my English poems. So I started posting pictures that my students were drawing. They were just like doodling. Mm -hmm. And I posted one one day and like a bunch of people liked it, like 30 people. Wow. And, for, and that was a lot at the time. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, people. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm going to post the drawings that the kids do. So I started posting the drawings the kids do, and then I would sneak my poetry in there. So I would take like Creative. I would take like one or two lines or like my poem, and I would put it with the kids drawing. Right. And I had no intention of like selling them or doing anything. I just wanted attention. But people contacted you. Well, like people started them. people started liking liking oh. it. So. But you you have. Been making art then since a long time ago because you were telling me that you used to make it's poetry and like journaling. So that's oh, yeah, yeah, another yeah. kind of art, right? I guess so, yeah. yeah. But but like visual art, like only maybe like a year, year and a half now. And what was your, what were your poems about? Are they related to the kind of art you have right They now? tried to I feel like I accomplish what it is I'm trying to say much clearer in like a visual medium than I do in my writing. I, I, maybe because I, I kind of studied writing that I'm like overcritical of it, right. and I didn't study painting. So when I paint something, I'm like, oh wow, this is fun, this is cool. But when I write something, I'm like, it could be better, you know? <laughs> okay. So, so it's, it's... You feel but, more flexible. I feel more flexible. And then I also, like if I have an idea, I feel like I can get it across visually better than I can with words. And I'm pretty good with words. So that I, I can I can tell. <laughs> so you're telling me about like uh, how you came to Korea, um, how it influenced your art, right? But what made you think about um, creating this exhibition that like I think is the fourth, fifth one? Fourth, this is the this fourth is the fourth one, one right? Yeah. Like how did it start but, like so, so I started making art, right. and I started, uh, you know, posting it on Instagram. And the other thing I did was I found artists in Korea, and I would just go support them. Okay. So, like, people would do uh, an exhibition at a gallery, or, or even in a bar, or in a cafe, or, or just, or they just were posting their art. And I was very verbal, like, uh, or very outgoing. Okay. I would just be like, hey, this is cool. And a lot of times I, I would use like a translator too, like Google Translate, and I would talk to a Korean artist. Yeah. And I would, I would say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna come to your exhibition, because I needed something to do. Right. So before, because um, I didn't have to go to the Hagwon until like 1.30 in the afternoon, so I would go to exhibitions in the morning, and then I would go to work. And on the weekends, like Saturday and Sunday, I would go to exhibitions. So I'd, I'd find the person on Instagram, because I was new to Instagram. Right. So I was like, this is amazing. You can connect with people. One of the reasons I hate television is because it's like a one-way medium. Like the television talks to you. You don't talk to the television. But the Instagram has the potential to talk to somebody. You know, like, like I could send a message to Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails tonight, and maybe he reads it. That's crazy. So you started connecting with people through Instagram, like especially artists and getting into the community. Yeah, I think, and I think, because I thought about it a lot, I was like, why doesn't everybody do this? And I think people just became like kind of used to, they, they turned their experience of Instagram into a one-way street, where they're mostly consuming as opposed to producing. I found artists on Instagram, and I would just say, hey, I'm going to come meet you. I'd go talk to them. 
Um, people love it when you support their, their art. Can you remember the specific time that you had the idea of like, oh, I should make an exhibition like for all of these people, like yeah. maybe Korean, it's a community or something. Like, oh. So if, if you painted something today and you want to put it in a public place, you have to own a building or you have to pay two million won a week to have it in Incidong. Mm. Or you have to be invited by a gallery. And if you're going to be invited by a gallery, you have to have a portfolio. You have to have gone to an art college. You have to know a bunch of people. You have to be famous. Like, Many steps. There's all these, there's steps, in, but they're not even steps. They're just walls. Mm. And so people aren't allowed in. Okay. So a, a Korean woman, Suhei, she does this like one day exhibition thing where she invites artists to her studio to put stuff up for, for one day. It's called the Mayfly. You know okay. what a mayfly is? No. Can you explain? It's like an insect that like lives underground like its entire life, and then it comes out for like an hour or two, wow. and like has sex that and dies. That's it. Has a little, uh, yeah, to do with metaphor. Yeah, it's kind of like metaphor. Yeah, yeah, underground, and I come out just to have sex and die. <laughs> so, so okay, I now did. We know I, what's going to happen? I did the mayfly. It's, it's been longer than an hour. Let me know. <laughs> I did the mayfly. And I was so like, it was just like, I was like, oh. Because I had like a Hanji piece, like the Korean paper that okay. I had painted, and she let me hang it up on the wall, and people were taking pictures of it, and I was like, I was like, mom, but they put my painting in a, in a room. How oh, did that make you feel like? Oh, it, it made me feel amazing. But I didn't know that that's what I was gonna do when I was just drawing and doing stuff every day. Right. I was just doing stuff. So when I did the Mayfly, I was grateful that okay. somebody gave me the opportunity. Because I also like, simultaneously, I was, I was working at this job where I really felt like, I was like, they don't hear me. I was like really sad all the time at the job. What do you, ah, uh, you mean at the job? When I was teaching. Okay. And I was like, this job sucks. And I tried to like tell them, like, I'm like really depressed. Like, I, I don't, I'm not happy. It was like post-COVID Korea, I'm teaching. It was my first time teaching, so I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was just really struggling. And, but I felt like they didn't hear me. And so like, I was like, nobody, it's like I'm crying and everyone's deaf. Like nobody was hearing what I was. So I felt like I wasn't like a human being. And you felt heard? By doing art. So when somebody, yeah, when somebody invited me to put uh, something on the wall, and, and then they told me I could like have like an artist talk, and then like there were other people I met them, and they were like, hey, I like this thing, and yeah, I was like, oh god, I'm like a person, <laughs> right? So, like so people can see me, like they can see like the things I do. Mm -hmm. And and then that same night, this guy James came to the uh, Mayfly. And he is with the Yongsan Fine Arts Association. James. Yeah, and he's been an artist in Korea for about 10, 15, 20 years. He's been, he's been out here a long time. And so he invited me to go to the Yongsan Fine Arts. Uh, it was like an exhibition where it, I think the Yongsan, because every district in Korea has like a Fine Arts Association. Okay. But Yongsan's the only one, I think that uh, allows foreigners to participate. So he's very proactive in like getting people to come and, and put their work in the show. So it's not difficult to make art. It's difficult to have your art seen yeah. in certain places. That's true. So he invited me there and I was thrilled about that. Mm. And then around that same time, I met this guy, uh, Calum, King Scribbler. You know this guy? No, I don't know him, but maybe he will watch this. <laughs> he, I met him and Casey Tosh. You know Casey Tosh, the Australian guy. Yeah, I know Casey. Skateboarder, yeah. rascal, yeah, yeah, rascal, right. Flurry. rascal, rascal. <laughs> There's a link in the. No, uh, so I love you. Go so so I met I met Casey Tosh and King Scribbler at the living room. Oh, living room. Yeah. This place. And I showed <laughs> I showed um, King Scribbler some of my drawings where it was like the kids drawing and I was just writing next to it and he was so encouraging he was like I think you have it and I was like I have, I have. like because I really looked up to him because he was like an artist who'd been out here for a long time and I was like really new so I like went home that night and I was like I've got to I've got to just keep going you know like it, it really
pumped me up. And, uh, and so he got me uh, connected with the people at the living room and they offered me like a solo show. So this is what happened. I, I was just doing stuff on Instagram. And then from May, June, July, in those three months, I ended up with like six shows. And, uh, and then I got invited to show my work in Incidon uh, for one day for this girl, uh, Tasha, she was doing this ataraxia of it. It was pole dancing. How many pieces did you have? Like 45. 45 pieces? Yeah, like 60 by 90 hanjis. Wow. I, I just taped them to the wall. Too many. It was a lot of work. But I was so excited and like grateful. And when I did that one day event, the director of the coat, this girl Julie, uh, in Incidon, she saw my work and she offered me a show, and then I ended up with two shows in Incidon, like, that month. And so I was really grateful that I had just, because I, I really wasn't focused on getting shows, I was just focused on just producing work. At the time, did you imagine that you will create something like this? Like, like a community of artists that come together? I was like, all these, I'm, I'm meeting all these artists, and they like they know each other, but they didn't like they didn't hung out with each other or like created together or like mm -hmm. or like it seemed like there were a lot of artists, but they were all kind of scattered all over the place. And and so I I guess for me like I played guitar when I was younger, so I always thought of a guitar player as somebody who's like in harmony with a band. Exactly. Like you're doing something. Yeah, the guitar people. can yeah. play like with so many instruments. It's like very versatile. Yeah, and, and that was kind of what I liked to do. I didn't like to play by myself. Yeah, I feel that. Who wants to play with themselves? No. So my idea of like creating and being a part of like a cultural scene was kind of based in my experience with music uh, when I was younger. And I was like, I like playing with other people. So I was new to art, but I was like, why isn't everybody playing together? You know? So, so I guess that was like, so I had this, I had this, this is gonna sound crazy, but I swear to God this happened. I had a dream. Okay. I had no, a dream one I don't think it's night. crazy at all. I had a dream one night, and in the dream, there was a bunch of the artists that I had met, like in Seoul, and they were just all working together on like one canvas. And I was like. So. Like, it's like I, I like saw it. Did you see those people before, or like you met them? No, I knew that. No, I knew no, it. Knew but then I, I had the, the, it was like a William Blake vision of just like... An epiphany. You know? Yeah, I was like, whoa, this could... Have you to know. do something. What happened, the, the way we ended up with Hechemoyo was I did a bunch of shows and went to this guy Sir Khan's show. He's the marbling artist. You right. know him? Yeah. Probably knows him. Yeah. I went there and I talked to him and he kind of knew what I was doing with all the people in the scene. And, and just going to exhibitions and I had a bunch of things happening. He told this woman, Mina, who was working for Polite Galleries, like, you gotta meet this guy, Neil. Like, he seems to just have a lot going on. And so Mina uh, contacted me and said, uh, you know, come to a meeting. So I went to the meeting and she said, why don't you do, we bought a, a new building and so we want to turn it into a gallery, so why don't you do a solo show there? So I said, I said, this is a new gallery, right? So this is a new gallery. That means nobody knows it exists. And you don't have a list of collectors, you don't have anything going on. It's basically just a building. I said, if, if I do a solo show there, five people come. If I do a, a show with 30 artists, each artist brings five people, 150 people come. It's like a chain, right? right. Like you right. do something and then they bring more people. And then I thought too, it's like, this would be a good way for me to, um, you know, create, um, relationships with people, right? A lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, some people it's like, I want to get a solo show. But I already had gotten one and I was like, I was already grateful. So I was like, let me, like, I thought I could help other people by getting them a show, you know? So I reached out to like 30 people and um, I invited them to, to Polite to do this thing and uh, Suhei, the woman who gave me my first opportunity to show my work, I invited her, and she's the one who came up with the word uh, hechemoya. Well, that's how the word came, like hechemoya. Yeah. That means you're gathered all over the place, and then you come together. Yeah, yeah it's like it's taken from the army, so it's like uh, it's like a command. Like everybody's scattered all around. Hechemoya. Yeah, hechemoya, and it's like everybody lines up, comes together. Interesting.
interesting because I feel like um, you know so many people just think about themselves all the time and it, they are like oh I have to create something so I I can be shown out there but like in your case I, yeah I think you, I'm... you thought about someone else right you were like hey like I think this community is so nice that I should like share it with other people I think so I think part of it is that I was also struggling with like because I'm new to creating art, I wasn't really taking myself that seriously. So if somebody paints for 25 years, they probably want a solo show. I don't know, if you know what I'm saying? Okay. But because I was kind of new to it, I, I, I was willing to take unselfish risks because I didn't think I deserved as much attention either. So that's kind of part, of, I'm not like a humanitarian, you know? <laughs> okay. So that's kind of part of it. Uh, but, but yeah, and we had done, that guy James the, from Youngsan, he owns the Drip Drop over by Hongdae. And so I had actually done, before I did the first Hechemoyo, I had I had told him, Lara, the woman who does the portrait paintings, I was just talking to her on Instagram. And we had a meeting and I told her, I was like, I was like, there's a lot of spaces in Korea where there's Korean artists showing work. Because I had gone to like, a ton of exhibitions in the last year. So I was like synthesizing the data. I was, I was putting it together. I didn't, that's not why I went. But by just going, I was like figuring out what was going on. And I was like, there's a lot of spaces where there's Korean artists, and there's a couple spaces where there's foreign artists, but there's very few, if any, spaces where there's both. And in the exhibition that you <coughs> were told to go and do a solo exhibition, it was also with foreigners and Koreans, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so when I met that guy James, and right. he said I could do something at the Drip Drop for one day. Yeah. I invited five Korean artists and five foreign artists. Nice. And um, so that was the first Hechemoyu. Yeah, that was. No. We call it the Artist Networking Event, which is oh. so fucking lame. Now that I think about it, because I talked to people after, they're like, we saw the post, and it sounded like you know you put a tie on and you go somewhere and exchange business. <laughs> 